What's going on guys? So I really did not want to do another deck profile, but I was playing, I was like, I kind of forgot about the tune support that I talked about a while ago. So I looked it up, and I looked up, and I saw on, uh, was it Gage? I think it was Nim Nim. I think it was. Did a vi video on Doppelganger that I never even saw that card before. So I looked it all up, I was like, you know what? I'm playing tunes, and I'll tell you what pretty damn fun. Uh, is it the best I ever? I don't know about that, but so far I've been doing pretty good. I gave a hero player a run for his money. I mean, I beat him, but it, it was like, it was it was fun. It was, it's, it's a fun deck. I think this is a type of deck I would pick up. It's just the right amount of good, but not overpowered for me. Like I said, I don't like playing completely overpowered decks, but at the same time, I do want to play more competitive later on eventually, so we'll see how it goes. But all right, I didn't want to do another deck profile, so even though I'm going to put deck profile in the title, take this as more of a work in progress video, um, because I'm still testing things and whatever, and this is, I could be playing tunes completely wrong, but this is how I'm playing it right now, so bear with me. So, Tune Mass Sorcerer, a boss. Um, I've never looked into tunes before either, so if this card's been out for a while, then forgive me. But, um, or if it's new, I, I, I don't know. But, uh, this card basically is your, is your uh, draw engine, and it's pretty dope. Uh, this is kind of, he, Mermaid can just special summon herself, Gemini uh, makes your opponent's hand advantage go away, and Cyber Dragon's still the same, and I'm playing Chaos Sorcerer and a BLS just because I'm playing three darks and three lights, and they're easy to be searched out via my other cards, so why not? Playing one day of peace because I like to be safe, uh, you can take, if you're not a one day of peace fan, I would take that out and just play another trap, honestly. Um, two duality. I was learning three duality. It was just too cloggy, and it's not that you special summon that much that you can't play three duality. It's just more like I didn't need three duality, so I'm playing two duality. Two MST because you're protected by two kingdom half the time, and really I only was used MST to get rid of like problem ca um, causing cards like either vanities or some type of field card or anything that was really bothering me. Any uh, card that just prevented me from doing what I wanted that was a spell or trap. So that's pretty much what that's for. And my, so, yeah, I'm playing one Dark Hole, one Raigiki, that's my common setup. You could play two Dark Holes if you felt like that you needed to. Um, the deck that makes this deck boss, Tomb Kingdom, uh, it's basically just Tomb World, and when you activate it, you banish three cards from the top of your deck, and then pretty much if any Tomb Monster is going to be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can banish a card for each of those monsters for the rest of the turn, or for that specific, yeah, for that specific instance. So that's pretty dope, and that works out well. Yes, you do thin out your deck, and it could be a problem, can, if your opponent keeps having a deck that can do things to you, but for the long run, pretty dope. Three Toon Table Contents, this is just a generic searcher for any of these cards, uh, well, the Toon cards anyway, so for Toon Kingdom and all your Toon Monsters, so it's a pretty good um, doppelganger. Uh, I could go on a whole video about this card, but this card is amazing. If you already don't know, uh, well, I'll read it off to you. If you control a Toon World and a Toon Monster, target one card in your opponent's graveyard. If it's a monster, special summon it to your side of the field. If it's a spell or trap card, set it on your side of the field. You can only activate one double ganger per once per turn. That is awesome. It could, I could activate a, uh, I could activate a Raigeki, or a Dark Hole, or whatever I wanted. If it, uh, or put a Bottomless that they had and set it on my side of the field. Even though they know it will be a Bottomless, it will be a Bottomless that's on the field. So I digress. It's a great card. Okay, one Book of Moon. Uh, I was going to take out that and play another trap, but Book of Moon is still like a trap, and it's a good card for certain instances, so I still dig it, so I was playing Book of Moon, and a lot of people think it's like a staple. So, hey, I'll play that staple. Torrentials, Vanities OP. Uh, I would love to have, wish, this is like one of the few decks I wish Vanities was back to three. I know other people would be like, are you kidding me? Vanities should be back to three for any, and I, I just, I don't know, it just was working well in this. Because they don't really special summon, so it didn't really halter or me at all. Compulse on bottomless and a void trap hole. The void trap hole can really be eh for any other trap. I was three, playing three magic cylinders, but it was down to two. I wasn't really feeling it. I'll tell you what, though, magic cylinder really helps with this deck. Because all it takes is one big beater for them attacking you like a mirror force or a deep prison, and you already did some life point damage with the rest of the tunes, and then there you know it, it's game. So if you want to play three magic cylinders, I wouldn't really question you. And then Tune Mask, which is a yet to be made out card. This is a very interesting card. I like this card. Um, I wouldn't play more than two, but I was I didn't even really like it at two. I like it at one right now because I like my defensive lineup, but I'll read what it does. If you control Toon World, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, specials that summon one Toon monster from your hand or deck whose level is less, less than or equal to that target's level or rank ignored in its summoning condition. So basically, 
I can get out all my level 4s. Uh, it, most monsters that people summon are level 4s. If you're running a lower deck, that might not help as often. Or if they summon a big beater, especially with Pendulums being a thing now, I could get Cyber Dragon out. Uh, so, yeah, and then I'm... That's pretty much the extent of that. I like it. It's a fun card. Extra deck. Extra deck is kind of just thrown together like I usually do, uh, but there hasn't been really anything that I have been needing, so this is just like, I'll just show you what I want. Diamond Direwolf might be a good card to put in here that I don't have in here, so keep, take that. Um, I'm playing Cyber Twin Dragon for Cyber Dragon Nova. Uh, I will probably never make it, but with this being a card, I couldn't... I could have a Toon Dragon Cyber, I mean Toon Cyber Dragon or like Special Summon to the field, and then I could activate Toon Mask if they had like a level five or higher monster out in the field that I could bring another Cyber Dragon. Would it happen? Probably never, but I have it in here because I didn't really need many other extra deck cards in this deck, so I was like, why not? I can fit Cyber Dragon Nova and Cyber Twin Dragon in here with no big deal. So that's why that's there. Playing one number eighty, uh, Black Ship Happy May Stroke. Basically, the other maze stroke, that's what I like to think of it as, because if you target one face down the field, you can change it to face down position. If you target one face up, you can change it to face down position. It's just maze stroke's brother, but different things. <laughs> uh, Dark Rebellion Dragon, two number 101s, next Taunt, Gog Cowboy, uh, Dweller, another Cowboy. I like Cowboys in this because you do life point damage, and if you really like late game and you already have the damage from an attack, you can just overlay if you have a. I, I like Cowboy. Uh, Dweller is an amazing card for this too. I would probably play two Dweller, uh, especially the Fire King matchup. I was, I mean, Fire King matchup is bad for a lot of decks, but for specifically for this deck for some reason, because if you want to protect your tunes, you can keep doing the banishing thing, but that thins out your deck, and also they'll probably still get ahead of you. So Abyss Dweller would be a good card to play. Um, and then I'm playing a level chain for really no exact reason. I don't know why I'm playing it. It's just in there. Uh, I can put a card on top of my deck if I really needed it or something. But, yeah, this is the deck, guys. Um, like I said, it's more of a walk, work in progress, but I'm going to put it as a deck profile just because, I mean, it's not a bad lineup. It's been working well, and I've been playing it pretty much for hours now, and I've been pretty happy about it, and so that's why I'm sharing it with you. Uh, let me know down below what you would change, what you would add, if there's any cards I'm not aware of that you could play in this. Um, really, this is just me asking for any opinions. And also for people who want a baseline that if I've been having fun with this, so there you go. So yeah, let me know in the comments below and everything, and uh, I'll see you later, guys. Peace. And I won't have it. <laughs>